Since the early 2000s, when Israel Finkelstein's low chronology of Iron Age Palestine became a serious threat to the idea that Solomon was a great builder king, several archaeologists, usually of medium to low repute, have suggested linking places they are excavating with the biblical united monarchy, said in the Bible to have been ruled by the early to mid 10th century BC Jerusalemite kings David and Solomon. The third, though almost certainly not the last, of such archaeologists, as I shall call them, we must deal with, is Eilat Mazar, the excavator of the large stone structure, a collection of walls in the northern section of the city of David, the oldest part of Jerusalem. Eilat Mazar claims this collection of walls was the biblical palace of David. She also believes that the 10th century BC city of David was a town surrounded by a city wall and shows good evidence of monumental architecture. To analyze these claims, we must first examine the area surrounding the large stone structure. All of the area excavated by Eilat Mazar was, in whole or in part, excavated by one of these three people. R.A.S. McAllister and J. Garrow Duncan in the 1920s, and Kathleen Kenyon in the 60s. Kathleen Kenyon excavated her Area H just to the north of Eilat Mazar's excavation area, and excavated her Area P on its eastern side. McAllister excavated all of Eilat Mazar's excavation area, but not to the depth Mazar herself did. Yigal Shiloh, in the late 70s and early 80s, excavated some 20 meters to the east of Mazar's excavation area. In order to check for evidence of monumental construction in the early Iron Age city of David, we must first focus on this area. Just to the east of the large stone structure lies the stepped stone structure, possibly to be identified with the biblical Milo. At least the lower part of this stepped structure was clearly built in the early Iron Age, as two Iron Age 2 B to C structures, the House of Ahiel and the Burnt Room, were built on top of it. The lowest floor of the Burnt Room was laid with a fill containing exclusively Iron Age 2 A pottery. This fill was certainly laid during or after the Iron 2 A, and almost certainly before the end of the Iron 2 B as the Iron Age 2B city wall rendered any defensive capability of the step structure pointless. This is paralleled by the fill in the rock-cut pool near the Gihon Spring, which contained both Iron 2A and Iron 2B pottery forms. However, according to Eli Shukron and Ronnie Rake, this pool was the only way to access Hezekiah's tunnel before its construction. Thus, the fill in this rock-cut pool must have been laid down in the time of Hezekiah. The fill in the burnt room was also probably laid down in the Iron 2B, just after the construction of the Iron 2B city wall. We must now turn to the pottery found inside the terraces below the stepped stone structure to narrow down its date. The pottery inside the terraces below the stepped stone structure was entirely pre-Iron 2A in date. Thus, it is clear that the origins of the stepped stone structure must date sometime between circa 1050 and circa 750 BC, and most probably sometime within the late Iron 1 or Iron 2A, that is, sometime within the 10th and 9th centuries BC. Thus, monumental construction in the city of David in the Iron Age 1 to 2a is theoretically possible. However, when were the walls of the large stone structure constructed? To answer this question, we must firstly deal with the stratigraphy of the area. According to El Atmazar, a flattened whitish surface was laid over cup marks dating to the Chalcolithic period. Above this surface, to the south of wall 107, a brown earth accumulation roughly a foot or so thick was found. In this brown earth accumulation were found numerous pot sherds, dating to between the Middle Bronze 2B and Early Iron Age 2A, including the elusive Late Bronze. 
Also in this accumulation, to the southeast of room D was found a layer of iron-1 metallurgical industry debris. Above the brown earth accumulation were founded the walls of the large stone structure. According to Marguerite Steiner, pavement 565 of this structure is actually the Middle Bronze Age city wall. In between the two parts of wall 107 of this supposed structure was founded a Herodian vault altered chamber. Thus, the walls of the large stone structure must have been erected sometime between the 10th and 1st centuries BC. The question is, when? Both Amahe and Elat Mazar and Avi Faust argue that all the walls of the large stone structure were built in the earliest part of this period. Thus, they imagine a literal 10th century BC large stone structure crowning the northern part of the city of David. However, it is not at all clear that all the components of the large stone structure and stepstone structure date to the same period. In the Hasmonean period, the stepped stone structure was covered with a fill to create a defensive glacis. Indeed, the Tel Aviv school argues that the entire upper part of the stepped stone structure was constructed during the Hasmonean period to help prevent slope erosion. According to all experts, Eilat Mazar's excavation uncovered a section of the Hasmonean city wall, built between the two Hasmonean towers. According to the two Mazars, this city wall was a Wall 27, built over Wall 20 of the stepped stone structure. According to Marguerite Steiner, the outer, or eastern, face of Wall 20-27 should be associated with the Hasmonean city wall, while the inner, or western, face of this wall should be associated with an earlier wall. Israel Finkelstein also apparently accepts the existence of a pre-Hasmonean wall under Wall 27, due to the fact Iron One metallurgical industry debris appears to abut the inner face of Wall 20. Secondly, it appears that Wall 107 is not a single wall, but two connected walls. This is strongly supported by the fact that there is a 2.5 meter drop in elevation along the foundation of Wall 107. It is probable that, as argued by some of those associated with Tel Aviv University, Wall 107 West and Wall 67, 74, and 84 were actually constructed in the Hasmonean period, as their courses align well with the Hasmonean ritual bath dating to the reign of Alexander Janius, or later, found directly to the southeast of these walls. We should also note that in the lowest layer of architecture found by McAllister and Duncan was discovered their inner wall. This inner wall is parallel to Wall 107 West, and therefore, was likely part of the same structure as Wall 107 West. According to the Tel Aviv University interpretation, Wall 107 East is, except for its western end, not the north wall of the structure associated with Wall 107 West at all, but rather the south wall connected to the Hasmonean city wall of the structure associated with walls 19, 21, and 23. The Tel Aviv University interpretation thus concludes that Eilat Mazar has not excavated the entirety of the northern half of a literal large stone structure, but rather the northeastern part of a large Hasmonean building. Several facts support the Tel Aviv University interpretation. Firstly, Late Iron Age pottery has been discovered by Eilat Mazar in her excavation area in only two loci, loci 39 and 47. Secondly, in Kenyon Square 18, just to the northeast of the North Hasmonean Tower, Iron II ashlars and a huge proto aeolic capital were found in a collapse dating to 586 BC, suggesting the existence of a large late Iron Age public building upslope. Indeed, this was one of the original arguments Eilat Mazar made in 1997 for excavating the area to the west of the Stepstone structure. However, no evidence of Ashlar masonry has been found in Eilat Mazar's excavation area. 
Thirdly, a complete Herodian cooking pot was found among the boulders of this large stone structure. The above facts strongly suggest almost all of the late Iron Age remains were removed prior to the construction of this set of walls, and that, therefore, this set of walls dates to the Hasmonean period. Locus 47, in room C, north of wall 107, did yield late iron to A, that is, mid to late 9th century, pottery, including a mostly complete Cypriot black on red juglet. However, some iron to B pottery was found below iron to A sherds in this locus, thus suggesting this locus is a fill originating from nearby and perhaps moved to its present location during the Hasmonean period. Thus, it is highly probable that all of the walls of the large stone structure, excepting perhaps the walls of half room E, are Hasmonean in date, dating from the early 1st century, rather than from the early 10th. While the Palace of David may have once existed in the northern part of Eilat Mazar's excavation area, it is not to be seen today. The question now comes to Eilat Mazar's motives for her sensationalism. It is clear that Eilat Mazar already thought she would find the Palace of David by the time she started excavating, as she published a 1997 article arguing King David's palace would be found just to the west of the stepstone structure. It is also notable that Eilat Mazar is on friendly terms with a group of Armstrongists, and is clearly influenced by her father's friendship with Herbert W. Armstrong. Finally, it seems that Mazar has, unlike the previous two archaeologists we have discussed, never questioned biblical inerrancy. Due to these factors, I can only conclude Mazar is an Old Testament inerrantist. It is clear why a Hebrew Bible inerrantist would wish to find evidence of David and Solomon's building projects in Jerusalem. Thank you for watching.